Welcome to What Is That? And that is a hangover, a.k.a. feeling rough, microwave death, warm death, hanging out of your ass, or obligatory never drinking again. Now, I usually don't suffer from hangovers, but not because I don't drink. I just don't sober up in the first place. However, recently I had a very painful brush with a hangover during the last weekend. I'm not even sure how it happened, but needless to say, I woke up and, well, life went downhill very fast. I remember that. You looked terrible. Yeah, and don't pretend like you even care. Yes, I did. I specifically remember needing bland food and asking if you could go to the corner shop and get me some potato and leek soup. But you came back with vegetable soup. It's like you didn't even care. They didn't have any potato and leek soup. And it's it's also not a big deal, like, but I had to cook it myself. I was practically devastated and had to look after myself. Look, I looked after you, but you still get no sympathy because it was self-inflicted. I was a victim of circumstance, I think you'll find. Or chances are it's probably dinner, actually. Could have been food poisoning. What? Food poisoning from a vegetarian salad? Behave yourself. All right, all right. Anyway, let's move on. So, what is a hangover? Well, the word hangover can be applied to a variety of scenarios in modern society, such as a food hangover or a hangover from a bad relationship. However, we will be focusing on the classic hangover from alcohol. A hangover is defined by a group of physical and mental symptoms that appear roughly within 24 hours of drinking alcohol, more commonly in the morning or early afternoon depending on when you wake up. The physical symptoms can range from headache, dizziness, sickness, vomiting, stomach ache, shaking, sweating, sensitivity to light, halitosis, muscle aches, increased heartbeat, gruesome, unquenching thirst, diarrhoea, and fatigue. Sounds fun, right? These are also coupled with psychological symptoms such as anxiety, moodiness, irritability, shame, and desperation, to name a few. So at this point, you have to ask yourself the question, was it really worth it? Now, how hangovers occur is a bit more complicated than simply being dehydrated, as some would assume, because there is a multi-factor process happening while consuming alcohol. Point number one. Alcohol makes you urinate more frequently because it is a diuretic. The reason for this is alcohol suppresses vasopressin, which is the body's antidiuretic hormone. The result of this is simple. Urinating more frequently means the body loses more fluids, leading to dehydration. Also, as one might expect, during an all-night bender, the average person will only consume alcohol and will not partake in a sensible glass of water. Point number two. Alcohol causes inflammation to the stomach lining in the gastrointestinal tract because it is an irritant to the stomach and intestine. This leads to an increase in production of gastric acid with pancreatic and intestinal secretions increasing as well. The end result of this gastro-inspired cocktail is that churning feeling in your stomach the morning after or during the night out itself. Point three, and here is the scientific theory bit, and with scientific theory comes big words. An enzyme in the body called dehydrogenase breaks down the alcohol into a chemical called acetaldehyde. Another enzyme, acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, breaks the acetaldehyde down even further. Both enzymes require a coenzyme called NAD+, in order to function properly. This NAD+, is used up in the process, and the body must produce more of it. The problem arises with the fact that NAD+, is required for a lot of other processes in the body, such as regulating electrolyte levels. Alcohol consumption, to the point of a hangover, is technically an unnatural process and disrupts the homeostasis of the body, as it is forced to recover. In fact, the acetaldehyde could be the direct source of the hangover in most cases, as it is roughly 30 times more toxic than alcohol itself. Point four. The last point is a recent theory that shows it may be the person's own immune system contributing to the hangover. There is a study that shows that people with hangovers have high levels of cytokines, which are large groups of proteins, peptides, and glycoproteins that are produced by immune cells involved in cell communication and inflammation. While used to fight infection, trials have shown healthy people suffering classic hangover-like symptoms when subjected to large doses of these cytokines. So why are some people more susceptible or more sensitive to hangovers than others? Well, the truth is, we're not entirely sure. However, there are a few things we know. Genetics can be a contributing factor as well as the build and design of the individual themselves. Some people can actually process alcohol fast and more efficiently than others, as well as have more of the required enzymes available. Some people are just straight up have more common sense than others, 
They know their limits and don't push it. Or they can make sure they are well hydrated and have a good meal before the drinking commences. As mentioned earlier, the build of the individual can contribute as well, such as a smaller person being unable to handle as much alcohol as a larger individual. Experience in drinking. Alcohol is also a point worth making. The legal age to drink in the UK is 18 years old. So naturally, me and my friends started at 15. We all remember that first time we drank heavily and had no concept of boundaries or limits and way overdid it. Then at university, I became semi-professional and now I consider myself professional. Except for that last weekend. That was a blip. But these things happen. Despite all the science, sometimes life throws a stick in your spokes for no reason. At university, me and my friend would pub crawl down this one street that had six pubs on it to reach the pub at the end. After having about six pints, maybe a shot and some food, we would be pleasantly tipsy before getting a lift back to campus. Now we did this every Sunday as it kind of became an unspoken ritual. However, one time, we did exactly the same thing. Didn't change our drinks, food or routine, but by the last pub we could barely make a civil conversation, let alone stand up straight. That's what bars are for, to prop yourself up against. But big props to our friend who put up with us and corralled us both into a car to get us back to campus safely. Which brings us to the hangover cure. Old wives' tales abound, as old as time themselves or as old as wives themselves. It is important to note that hangover cures are often a myth, but should be more in the realms of good common sense, such as rehydrating with water and even salts, as well as eating in order to replenish the body with nutrients so it can recover from all that abuse that you've subjected it to. There is some good medical advice though, such as painkillers helping with headaches and stomach aches, sugary and isotonic drinks can ease shaking and aid recovery, even bland soups that are easy on the stomach can help. One important point to make here is that the hair of the dog, or simply having another alcoholic drink, does not help a hangover. This is standard medical advice for anyone who has been or plans on drinking, although admittedly I often tried this as I am only human, which leads us on to the ultimate and my personal favourite hangover cure, the full English breakfast. The breakfast of champions. So there we have it, the hangover, the bane of a good time. Just remember to eat wisely, drink sensibly and always have fun. See you next time.